Hello, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here on the River Wye on a little trip on the way back, fishing from further upstream on the River Wye. It is a beautiful autumn day. Just check out the colours on this tree here behind me. I've only got this camera with a few minutes left on it. I've got to try, hopefully, I've got to try and catch a pike on a lure. Woody from Woody's uh, Angling Centre in Hereford, he sent me up here and I'm on whatever beat I'm on. I don't even know where I am. I think I'll buy a dairy or something like that. There's a lot of mooning going, there's a lot of cows here. So I'm just basically throwing the lure around, but downstream I was told, oh, I don't know, a month or so ago about some, a guy that caught some barbel on a concrete platform. You know, just caught, I've never fished here, I've never fished here, I've never heard of that before there. So I might have a go at that. So I'm gonna give three or four hours piking, just give it a go, but check out these trees. Is that not a beautiful sight? Blue sky, no wind, Goodness me, one pike would do it for me. If I don't, I'm going to throw a feeder out for barbel, just see if I can get anything. If I don't get anything, then I'm going off home. But you know what? Fishing is fishing. It's got to be worth a couple of hours. Guy's got a decent pike on. I don't know how I'm going to get down there. It's like impossible. It's a, it's a good fish. It's a good fish, boys. Net. I don't know how I'm going to get down here. I'm going to have to grab the net. I'm going to open the bay line. Just let him ease off a bit. No way, just going to check here next swim over. Ah, it's like impossible. Oh well, there's no sting in here. There will be. What about this one, boys? <laughs> Is that not worth coming down there for? What a crackerjack pike. Thank you, Woody. Send me to the right spot. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure I'm in the right swim. But that one, with the river wire in the background, that's gonna be a beauty. I'm gonna take this guy to another swim and return it. I'll use a net this time. What an epic encounter with a big white pike. He's gone. Well guys, that was kind of mad fishing off that high bank like that. But I got down there, got the fish. And I'm so pleased I got one. Listen, I've got barely eight minutes left on this. I think I'm full of battery card. It says charge a battery card. This is the end of what I've got. So if I get any more pike, you probably won't see it. Any lure talks, I'll do at home. No, I'm not going to wait until the end of the film I'm going to show you guys now because I know you all want to know what this lure is. There's the lure. It's got a vein on the front. Somebody gave me this one. I can't think. I think it was Dusto. The artist gave me that. I think he said it's his best pike lure in Ireland. Dusto, tell us if it is, mate, if you watch our films. I think that's one you gave me. Anyway, it is a good lure, no question of that. So what I'm going to do, because I know you guys like lures, I'm going to put it in the clear water up here and pull it along because there's two ways of retrieving this. One is in a sort of constant retrieve. 
that way works very very good on a river you can just keep a steady wind on the reel and the other way which is what I do from twitching sprats and baits and dead baits is jerking stop jerking and stop I've had hits on this using both of those retrieves let's have a look underwater and see what it looks like okay this is that lure and I'm just walking along towing this at a constant speed you can see there's a very even sort of vibrating method of going along just winding at a constant speed obviously I'm walking along I can't wind and film I'm doing the best I can look at it again from above and you'll see from the aerial view there's actually a lot more action on it it doesn't really show up on the underwater camera but when I put the camera over the surface you can see quite a violent side to side action on it on a constant retrieve now I have caught on this but there's another way of doing it and that is by you using what I call a twitching and erratic action jerking it snatching it I've had possibly I would say more pipe strikes on this method with most of my lures rather than at a constant speed it's just because I've done so much bait fishing that you twitch stop twitch stop jerk all over the place again look at this one over the surface you can get an idea of how far the coverage from side to side this lure seems to cover it just does cover a wide area and drives them nuts so there you go a few tips there hopefully you know you might find out what this lure is well poor, poor old Mike's camera's absolutely covered in mud that fisher was just working his base on a high bank because I could look down and you get carried away with it don't you, you know being able to see the lure work and this fish just exploded on the lure and I've pike fish with lures here up and down up and down nothing so to get one like that good fish Woody said there were good sized pike in here but what a take in that clear water. I'm hoping I've got another memory card. I'm hoping I've got another battery. Fingers crossed, I'll get a few more casts in. I think if pike like that were around, I've got to stick with the lures and scrub the old barbel fishing. Well guys, it's just been lure fishing further down. It's going to be very, very windy. It'll probably get wind in the mic. This gentleman's got a big one about 20 something pounds. So two swims down, I've got a fish I can't get to take on a lure. So this apparently is a nice fish. I hope I've got enough memory card there to show it to you. Chance would be a fine thing on a lure, <laughs> wouldn't it, Jess? It would. There you go, look. Oh, we're well, a big piece out of its tail. Oh, it's got to be an otter, isn't it? Yeah. Got to be. Got to be chewed otter. Well, that's one lucky pike there, mate, because that's all they're going to do is incapacitate it and eat it. Yeah. Oh, good show. And a good scrap, you say? Yeah, very. <laughs> Water's still very warm, I think. You're going to get wind in the mic, people, because I haven't got the uh, muff on the microphone. But at least you get to see a good river wide pike. Because I can't catch one. <laughs> it's going to be a bit lively now, you've been sat in the net. Oh, lovely. That is a crack. I'll just come around this. If you swing in this way a bit more, I can come right down in. Beautiful, great big head on it, yeah. That's a beauty. Well done with that. I tell you what, it's a cracking fish that one. But did you see it? It's been attacked by otters. I've got one in front of me. I can't catch on my favourite barramundi lure. He's down by that bush. He's been up. I hooked him up once. He's come off. And then I've had him come up a couple of times. I was looking at it. If only I had some bait, like that other hang, angler had some dead bait, you can see the difference it makes. But hey ho, I've tried with lures. I've enjoyed it. I've walked about three miles, I should think. So I'm going to start my way home. When I get home, I'm going to talk through some of these lures with you. Don't forget, I'm going to be having a last cast. When you look at this backdrop, people, why wouldn't I have a last cast? Thank you.
do you know what people? Although I enjoyed catching that pike on that lure, what I didn't enjoy was losing that pike and seeing pike close in that I couldn't get to. Because once you stop fishing with a lure in the margins, it stops. It invariably either sinks to the bottom or floats to the surface. And the pike must look at it and go, depending whether it's on the top or the bottom, I go, well, I'm not going to hit that. It's obviously an inanimate object. It's not moving. But if you have a dead bait, you can fish it all the way in like a lure, or be a bit slower, but should you get a follow, you can just drop the rod top, open the bail arm. If you use a multiplier, put it in free spool, drop it on the bottom, the pike can go right down. I've seen this so many times. You leave it, it sinks on the bottom, you just pop it once, bam, they grab it. You can't do that with a lure, and that's why most of the time, I would what I am what you call a meat merchant, really. Really, I am. I'm a meat merchant, I like using bait. Fish eat bait, they don't eat lumps of plastic. Well, when they do, they just have graham. You know what I'm saying, though? The thing is, when I run out of space with the lure, at least I could drop a bait down. So, binoculars on. One of my favourite baits, not for big pike. That's right, sprats. Just dripped all over the pool table. I just dripped sprat juice all over the pool table. And as you can hear. Anyway. What I use, I'm trying to get away from trebles all the time. Of course I've used trebles, I've used trebles all my life. I'm trying to get away from them. Do you know why I don't like trebles? This is honestly, they're a pain to get out of the fish. If they go, if a fish does take deep and you've got no way of stopping it taking deep, except striking instantly and missing them all. You don't want to leave it too long, 10 seconds, something like that. Or you get it caught in the net. That's even more fun. And that's why most of the time I will hand lift a pike out, if I can, on a lure. Because if they get into the net, especially beginners, they twist and roll, it's a nightmare, a living nightmare. I'm sure a lot of you pike anglers out there have had that happen. And the worst thing is, if we experience, we can get it out. If it's a junior or a beginner or a learner or a novice, the old pike suffers, doesn't he? He does suffer because people take ages trying to get the hook out. So what I use are these. I'm going to show them to you. You've seen them before on our programs. And I'll show you the packet. I think they stopped doing them now. This is Partridge of Redditch. Used to make these now. Used to make these hooks, all right? And they're called a VB Pike Hook Downturned Eye. I'll put one there. Now, VB used to be, I think it was a gentleman called Vic Bellas, B E W L A R S, Pike Fisherman. And I think, obviously, Vic designed these hooks. And they got one, got a bit cardboard on it now. They got one big hook there. So put it there, you can see it. One big hook there, one small. You can use either for the bait holder hook, but those years ago we used with that to go into the bait like this. Let me show you what I mean. You'd be dead baiting. There's your trace, and it would rest like that. There, I can see it against the cream of that um, that wall there. So it rests like that. You wouldn't put the big one in. You use a small one as a sort of. But you can make these up yourself. These come braised together, welded together. I don't know. They're joined together. But generally, if I hold it very, very straight like that, you can see they're in line. Now, should a pike grab it and then hook on both hooks like that? And you get your forceps in like this, which you can go in through the gills if you know what you're doing, and turn the hook over. If it's a single hook, you can get the forceps in there and you can roll the hook out, pop it out. You can't do it with these if it's on, you know, it's, it's like grab both sides because you're rolling against each other. So what I do with mine, now I've no idea, you probably won't get these, this is my last of my old stock that I've had for four, 30 years, is I bend mine offset. Let's put it there and you'll see it. If I turn it slowly, so that the big hook is, is, is at a different angle to the others. Now, I'm not saying if anybody's marketing this type of, this type of hook now, that they're as strong as these partridge ones, because these are really incredibly well made. And you can see I've bent that. They are there. I've bent that at an angle. So what I do is hook the sprat on. And I'm just telling you this so you know, guys. You, look, it's very what we call laterally compressed. People say, why are you looking over there? I'm looking over here because the monitor's here. Hi, hi. Oh, the people are there. My God, I can see them. I can see some of you people there. Someone's got cocoa. What's, what's that guy got? He's got a can of lager. I've got nothing. Get the big hook. Put it through the bottom of the throat latch there. Roll it around and it just pops clear, but it's got to come out straight in between the head bit there. You see, so it's dead, dead central. And I put a shot here. Whatever shot you want, because generally sprats are very, very light. I put an, a single SSG in there. 
and I find that's enough. It sinks down and it enables me to pop and pop and pop and jerk and pop and just keep that flashing all the time. Pike grabs it, he turns it around like this, swallows it head first, and you would generally either on the big hook or the small hook, you'll get a pick up, you'll be able to hook it up. Obviously, after that trip, I thought, you know what? I've got to go pike fishing again, because it is a bit of a bug once you get going. So I decided to go down with Mike to a, one of our southern rivers, give it a go, see if we can't catch something on Twitch Sprat. This is how we did. Well, that was some sort of take. It's not a big fish, I've already seen it. No more than a couple of three pounds. I'm not sure he's still got it, but he absolutely boiled up right under the tree root, just, just out from that sort of coloured water there. Fingers crossed, guys. Fish on, fish on. Is he going to stay on? Well, I'll tell you what, for two pounds, he's, he's probably more than two pounds. This is my... Broken master pike rod. He's going more than two pounds. That's weird. Has he been eaten? Oh, maybe three. Here we go. A pike on the edge of the coloured water. It just shows you how they get out the stream. And you've got to look for tiny little changes in the flow. That's all you're looking for. On the sprat, they must be on the bite, even though it's coloured water. It's just a question of getting that that sprat right in their face, because this one is toast. There's the sprat. That's what's left of it. And the beauty of these hooks is you can just normally get hold of the bend, turn them upside down. Look, show you, just pop it out. There it is. Gently through the gill covers, release it. Get it like this and then lock your forceps back on it and put it out the way and then you can concentrate on what you're doing with the fish. There it is. Not big fish, I don't know, three and a half, four pounds maybe. But a pike in coloured water. Yes sir. The only thing now is <laughs> I've got to go back through the jungle with my fish to try and find where the water is. It's like going through the Amazon here. Look at it. Absolutely. This is where I was going. Gotta watch I but it was a it was a benefit. I just saw a tiny gap that I could get through, just a tiny gap, a squeeze through. Oh hope you don't get a booty. Oh man, I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. Let's just put that fish down there. Quietly let it recover. It's gonna go. Away it goes. Totally awesome yeehaw yeehaw for falling in the water uh oh uh oh oh shit my hell
So there you go, people. A few, a few pike on, yes, lures, big baits, and small baits like these sprats. They've, I've dripped it. I've dripped it. I've dripped. Smith, Smith, clear this up, please. I've done the same thing twice. I've dripped sprat juice all over, all over the pool table. Whoa, that's pretty funky. That's about four days old. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, subscribe buttons on both channels, that and TA Outdoors. Hit the little bell, then you will therefore be notified, hopefully, when the film goes up. You don't have to go searching. Just go through our playlist. If there's a particular species you like, then obviously you want to go for pike fishing, pull up all our pike playlists and there's loads in there. Anyway, a couple of guys have asked me in the background, what's this fish over here? This one here? Bring it over. Uh -huh. Well, you're six, it's so glary. That is what well, I used to do a lot big game fishing, a 450 pound sawfish caught down in Key West by the Marquesas. That's a group of islands. We were fishing for black tip sharks. My wife, the following day, got one of 350 pounds. So we had two cracking fish plus a load of sharks. So there you go, that's a fish called a sawfish, which is a protected species, I believe, now. Uh, over in Florida, I think you have to do things like phone in to some fisheries department when you hook them. This was years ago, but obviously we returned the fish. I think we tagged it, I'm not sure. And they ask, some guy says, what are these hooks on the background? Well, I need my glasses, I need my glasses for this one. Are you gonna see those? That was fishing out of, I think it was Jupiter Inlet, West Palm Beach in Florida. A single hook down for amberjacks. That's what happened when a bull shark ate the entire 30 pound amberjack. Obviously, next drop down, we sent down and posted to them half an amberjack on double hooks, even bigger, with double number 19 wire, which is very, very strong. That was in May 1985 when I was completely bonkers on big fish. Again, it got taken. And I was so strong, I was so powerful. Well, basically, I couldn't stop this huge bull shark, like 500 pounds, something like that. And that's what it did, straighten the hooks up. And most of that, I can tell you now, and the snap off would have been their jaw power, closing down, actually biting and bending the hook open, such as their jaw power. So there you go, I used to do a lot of big fish fishing years ago. Don't do it so much now, but I appreciate you guys watching. We will see you in the next program. Hopefully, you enjoyed this one. Believe me, guys. At the present time, there are plenty more films to come. We'll see you next time.